Great, thanks for starting. Have you received all your the um, challenge? Yes, okay. And you know, normally I would like to start with like who read it and what do you think of it? So who is able to tell us like uh, what they feel based on the scheme through that they have done? Yeah. Um, Binyam, yeah. Okay. Good morning, Yababal. Uh, and it's my understanding that uh, this week's challenge is to develop a pipeline in the mod a model that predicts future sales based on uh, a number of uh, input variables. Uh, and uh, but I have a few questions uh, connected with that. That is uh, first. That is, there are four uh, that sits uh, included in the challenge, and uh, the test in the train that sits have uh, uh, a bit difference. That means the test doesn't have a sales column, so uh, I'm not sure uh, that's a critical column because that's uh, the column we're required to predict. That's our target, so missing that in the Missing that in the test, wouldn't that create a problem? But it's a test, right? To know the validator. Yes, uh, so uh, we, the other variables are present, but the sales uh, column is not present. Does that make... Uh, yeah, yeah, so what I'm yeah, saying so is... What that's what you try to predict in the test data. So that means basically you are trying to predict that. It's like as if, like as if you are given a real task, right? Okay, so we're not uh, we are required to compare uh, the test result with uh, pre-existing uh, sales column. We're just required to predict uh, an, uh, a new result for each uh, entry in the test uh, data set. Yeah. So I, I think yeah, when you read more of the detail, you will see like why the test is there and you know how what you can do uh, on that. But it's it's ex exactly just that you would use your training to train your your model. And in principle, this was a Kaggle challenge, um, so you could go and search also in Kaggle. Uh, to see um, the thing. So normally you could have submitted this into Kaggle and you would be able to get. So I think I, I encourage you to also look, you know, some of, some data are novel, some data are actually we, we, we take from what is Kaggle and we add, basically we build on top of it uh, because we think that it has a certain relevance in many components. So, and if you look at the reference, I think the reference includes also, if I'm not mistaken, some Kaggle challenge. Um, so let me see that you could also look at. So um, yeah, Kaggle kernels. And we give you a lot from those, even we selected those Kaggle kernels to allow you to help you even understand better. So I think, you know, the whole point for us is not about, oh, like do something and evaluate. No, it's about, are you able to do it? something and in a real life you have the whole internet to do it and that there are many similar things probably to what you do and the whole point is understand but do it in a way that is reproducible so in principle you could after this you could submit i'm sure to kaggle um, in a certain way and you can get the evaluation but i think the way that we designed it is a lot more about to provide you the best thing that that is available out there at least as far as we, we scheme, we gave you, and then much more also 
we break it down such that you will be able to develop as a, as a machine learning engineer or data engineer, you know, you, all you needed is not about sometimes the result, the result can give you, the data scientist can give you, but to be able to deploy it, to be able to scale it, to be able to understand the details, right? It's like kind of uh, to monitor and um, basically, uh, basically maintenance, like to maintain it as well. So it's like when the data goes down, when the performance goes down, you have to be able to detect that, you have to be able to improve that. I hope I hope that answers your question, Vinay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Anyone else have want to say something about it? Okay. If not, I think it's I will go like the description. Uh, this is much more of a prediction, and it, this really happens a lot everywhere you go in every you know every company benefits a lot if they are able to know what's happening in the future. As you can imagine, if they are closer to what will happen to the future, they will make lots of money. Um, and one reason is that they can save waste. Let's imagine you are working on a fruit shop and if you know your customer like demand, then you will be able to actually, um, you'll be able to really be, uh, Okay, so you'll be able to really get a good idea of how much fruits, for example, you import or you bring to your um, to your shop, so that you'll be able to minimize waste. Okay, so that's really the one part that I would say uh, it's important, and and there are multiple for planning reasons. For example, for allocating money, you know, like how much money do you, do you have to store? How much? um assets you know how much kind of stock do you want to have like because the stocks change the price right so depending on when you buy them you can make money so you know if you can imagine a supermarket or something like that which is actually a big chain is buying something that you know in millions of quantities even if it's a diaper you know that that basically it's a millions of quantities and they're just a small one cent change you know, from one time to another in terms of uh, the, the profit they will make, for example, let's imagine the price is fixed and it's just that the, the time they buy is what makes the difference. So in that case, really one cent uh, like loss or one cent gain is going to make a huge difference as well as also in terms of like distribution because distribution requires like that you have to drive some cars. You have to drive not only cars, maybe send it by plane or by ship just such that you go from one place to another. And if you imagine you send so much quantity to one of your store, but they are not bought, but another store is, you know, is buying a lot because there's demand there. Now you have to take another, that one and, and bring it here. And if you can imagine that they, these people are shipping it so much, let's imagine for every sh like uh, drive, they are wasting 20, let's say $20, and imagine a wrong, uh, you know, how much save we can, they can make if they really predict it better. So all of this in everything, whether it's a supermarket, whether it's um, retail of any other sort, whether it's a government, some kind of demand uh, prediction, or in this case, demand is just basically sale. The sale prediction is key. So the let's call predictive analysis the whole you know machine learning is all about that sometimes and sometimes the, these are time series data time series climate or weather is time series so many things that depend on time that means it's a continuous process just always there is a need um is is called time series it's a classification is not time series right because you're not looking onto the onto the past of that data to predict the next time stamp. Like it's just usually like time series, whenever we say time series is that it has some kind of connectedness along a certain dimension. And by looking at the current time, you will be able to learn about what happens next at the current time in the past. So that's called time series data in general. And it's the most widely used in everything. Stock market is time series, you know, crypto market is a time series, sales is a time series, and all of this is related, okay? so. Your job here is to be able to um, build something 
a, um, like a model. So basically, you know, use a model and be able to provide it for many uh, stores, Rosman and Pharmaceuticals, they, you want to provide a dashboard such that they will be able to just, you know, the, the managers of those stores can use your forecast for planning purpose so that they can request demand before the time of high demand comes. And of course, demand, these things like uh, supermarkets and pharmaceuticals depend, of course, also on the time, on the season. For example, whether it's summer, winter, or whether it's holiday or not, weekdays or week weekends, uh, Christmas or not, right? So your task is about that. You have a data and that it has this store and you would understand more about the data. If you want, you can go also to the Kaggle, you know, that so that would give you a much more. I think this is basically just that, but a store is like the ID of the store and the sales, that it's turnover customers, the number of customers in a given day, so it's a time series per day, and the open hours, state holidays, school holidays, you know, all of that you would get. And again, the whole thing about what you're going to have this day is that you, yes, last time, of course, it was a lot, but you were able in a group to be able to understand something. This time it's a, not a group work, and you are going to do some of the things like the ML, uh, OBS pipeline, the, you know, the CML and all that, you will ask you to do it. So, because it's a continuation, unless you use it, you know, learning about means nothing, right? So you will be, of course, doing more and the same as the feature engineering, as well as also just um, this time, the extension uh, that we go on beyond what, what we did next uh, last week is we are going to explore a little bit more else, deep learning models using LSTM, which is like the you know one form of uh, time series modeling in, in deep learning. Uh, and then we'll also ask you to look at some other time series uh, predictive models profit. Profit is from Python, uh, from uh, Facebook. Um, it's used really highly for huge, like let's say it's a very fast, it's a non-parametric fitting model for predicting like kind of, basically it's a curve fitting. It fits curve and and then based on the, 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 the function of the curve, it will predict the future and it will learn. It's a learning, uh, it will learn the, the, the variables of the, the curve uh, from the data. And basically because it's fast and you know, as you can imagine, Facebook was using it for all form of their predictive thing uh, in time series, you know, how many posts are they going to get in the next, you know, one day, one, you know, next day or 30 minutes. So it's of course fast and highly scalable. It can run like for billions and billions of queries. So that's what they were using, but it's very easy. You will also ask you to use it. So that those will be the two dimensions we will be, you will be moving uh, or doing something different. All these are the same. Uh, the leaderboard is going to be the same. So in the interim, all the interim submissions are for, it's a slide. So for the report side, you will be uh, submitting a slide. It's basically to give you an, uh, an understanding. Task 1.1 is about asking you to look the data in, in the ADA sense, like in the exploratory data analysis. You know, we'll ask you like, oh, look into this, look in similar to the what, what we've done, for example, for the telecom challenge. It is to provide you the understanding of the data. So it's a guided one. And you basically would have to put it in something between 10 to 20 slides. Uh, all your understanding. And then, of course, uh, I think, as I always say, even whatever we ask you here or not uh, there, always start from explaining what you are doing. I think I have seen so many people, even after last time I told people just start right lift into the data. I think that's not what I, I mean, it's okay. You might get the full point, but that's not the point. You must always start with like with a section of like what you are doing, basically the business understanding. You always have to, like whether it's given to you or not, whether someone told you to do this or that, you have to start from the business understanding because without that, it, it you know, basically the document is not uh, self-containing because it's like, if somebody just looks at it, they can't understand why you, you did that. So to be able to give it, you know, self-sufficiency, to your slide, start with the business understanding. Why are you doing that? And where do you want to get? You know, what is the expected result you want to get? You know, it's like a summary. It can be a one paragraph. Just 
you have to always start from that. And then, of course, you know, all the others like the sectioning, explaining features, target data. I have to talk about if you are using, if you are doing some data analysis, you have to also say a little bit about the data, whether someone told you or not. Right. So, and then, of course, evidence of clear understanding of the business context and data and uh, basically, of course, a good good to look at. So that would be like a slide, like 10 to 20 slides uh, explaining that. And then um, for the final, again, you will be writing it in a report sense because we, we want you like at least at the end, you know, you have a few um, medium posts or LinkedIn posts that that you can actually show the world it would see what you have done, right? So that would be the case. And it's all just similar uh, as you did before. Um, you know, just uh, you have to get used to the rhythm, just like the, the change. And this time, the ML setup, the DVC ML flow, whatever screenshots, we ask you at the entry submission, just because we know that you have done it. So just spend the next two days really, you know, also for the same data while you do exploratory analysis to also set up that. So it's just fresh and, you know, you just get used to it, the habit of setting it up, right? Into a new repository, just copy whatever you have, modify it, you know, just simple, right? And then, of course, there is a dashboard and then um, the whole kind of analysis, like, you know, modeling, whatever, whatever, that would be into the final submission. Uh, so this time we pay attention a lot more on logging and try and accept, you know, how do you handle exceptions, you know, and how do you handle, I think some of you already are doing it, you know, so if you are doing it, great, but we will just take a look into that and we will just be marking whether you are saving your logs. So for example, ML flow is actually a logging system as well, some kind of you would basically log your artifacts as well as also your model, as well as also everything, right? So that's a kind of one of the model, but also we ask you just some kind of, you know, structured modeling in, um, to use. So that uh, in the structured logging and also to just be able to catch some, you know, because if you are deploying something, there are so many ways that people would use your, your dashboard. And unless you, you kind of think about, okay, if they don't do, if they do that, instead of crashing the whole system because of error, you need to be able to provide nice error messages, right? Uh, without crashing the system. So that's usually like this try and catch. Basically, you just f execute something, but if the request was not there, you know, you would just provide something that, that really is nice to, for people to understand. So that, that part of logging and like try, accept and logging will just be a little bit, will, will take a, a, a bit more in detail evaluating it. Uh, so that's basically your, again, as I said, final, we would only look at it in the final. And then the other one is, of course, just implementing your, the models that we request you. You know, the, again, we always are encouraging you to first think and plan and execute and decoupling between planning and execution. Because like the same brain, the same time doing the planning in the execution usually doesn't encourage you, it doesn't make you productive. So we want you just first to plan it, you know, and then second to execute it. And in between there is at least a small gap. Uh, it could be like a walk or a discussion or, you know, uh, AMA or anything, uh, just so that your plan is there in front of you. Now you, you get into the execution mode so that every other part, you know, we, we ask you just to do some kind of, of course, uh, design like your, your system, just like before, nothing different. Uh, as well as also, you know, in, in GitHub, in a project, you can plan it as part of issue or as part of something, all of your, even your entire week. So it's just that part is the design and EDA code and modularity, whatever is going to be the entry. And then, of course, the final uh, implementation of all the models um, um, will be the, the, the final one. Everything else we look in the detail will be the final one. Okay. Hopefully that's clear and everything is the same then after here. In instructions, of course, the first part is the, the first section is all about explore, understanding the data and, you know, really having intimate um, knowledge of what's going on, what are the variables, what are the missing fractions and all that, uh, blah, blah. Um, and then the other part is prediction, of course, stores uh, sales and you do it from two sides. One is the machine learning approach, including in this case, the curve fitting for profit. Another one is just deep learning approach, 
just you will be like doing that because next week it's fully deep learning so this time it's it's kind of we are moving you closer closer and then you know you know we, we will be in in week four for example it's actually really fully deep learning uh, modeling it's nlp for language um and and uh, command whatever so it's really you're getting used to also using keras and tensorflow and and all that um and this week so that's one is the exploration of customer purchasing behavior you know you can read it more and it's all about though just it's leading you at least to understand better of course you, as we said you can also come up with your own questions to to explore because that's the most important part sometimes of um, you know while you do something you will be better at it so but just the first thing is that check the distribution of both training and test sets are the promotions distributed similarly between these two groups you know that so that's even if you don't have sales in, in the test as you could see you can still actually think like you know um, you know do i have e enough representation sampling mm. and checking compare sales behavior before during and after holidays you can also do uh, and then any seasonality christmas easter uh, does this change some kind of purchasing behavior what can you say about correlation between sales and number of customers how does promotion affects uh, sales are the promos attracting more customers how does it affect already existing customers could the promos be deployed in more effective ways for example by looking at the data you may have certain suggestion which store should promos be deployed in trends of customer behavior during store open and closing times and you know all of that weekdays and weekends and the assortment type the assortment is basically just things that the the uh, this uh, company is holding in terms of the the type of uh, objects or type of items that it has you know does it affect um the the sales and how does distance to the next competitor uh, affect sales what if the store and its competitor all happen to be in the same around the same area you know whether how does the opening or reopening of new competitor affect stores for example across time you know the competitor value goes from na to non na and in that case you could just see like if the store was closed and open and so just so you know this is kind of a, a way to help you just start understand and guide but you can add more and we just added just a section uh you know as a way of like reminding you that you need to start working also logging implementing logging to your records and then of course the task two is basically prediction of store sales and that basically is um, you do some kind of processing in our case you have date time so for example because we want to these are date times are strings you need to convert them into dates and then also uh, convert them into weekdays weekends number of days to holidays and all that uh, part uh, okay and then also uh, because the distances between um this happens with the pretty special when using machine learning algorithms that use Euclidean distances. So this is basically the normalization because sometimes like hours are separated by integers, but distances are separated by meters. So unless they are normalized, sometimes you know the units will change, will affect some kind of like what does it mean a unit of distance in your data? You know, every dimension. So when it's normalization, usually remove this kind of it makes it unitless. So that means everything becomes normalized with respect to its maximum. So that way, you know, distance will have meaning. Whether it's an hour dimension, it's still it's a unit. The unit becomes unitless. So in that case, it will relapse. So that's why some kind of normalization of the data would help, right? And then again, like before, we we ask you and pay attention building things on a more pipeline approach. So that means you know you run classes and you kind of analyze them into in, in a form of pipelines you chain them basically one after the other such that it's reproducible and we ask you also to play a little bit with loss function what does it mean you know it's kind of a little bit understand as well as also there are different loss functions for your models especially for your deep learning and to be able to pay attention on that and then also after you predict it's kind of you analyze your your result whether it really matches your expectation or not uh, to estimate the confidence interval of lens for example how big is your error in terms of uh, making prediction 
So that one you will be able to do just in this. And then of course, for deployment, you have already done probably use serial as models into PKL or, you know, job leap uh, kind of way. And you just that's preparing it for uh, dashboard. And then also you do something similar with the deep learning, in this case, the long short, uh, long short term memory, uh, which is a recurrent um, neural network based model. And, you know, it's just, you know, the, it's implementation, it's already in Keras, so it's not hard. You can get it as I, as we also give you in some of the, you know, kernels that's below that you will find, you know, you can see the implementation of them. It's your task not to take anything without a little bit of understanding, you know, go through, even if you just, the whole code is given to you, go through the code, you know, don't, it's, it doesn't help you if you just copy something because it will be more work for you if you just copy something without understanding. You must be able to edit. You are a technical person who can edit everything, who can open every box. Nothing should be, you know, hidden from you unless it's just a matter of time. Um, uh, you know, it, it should just be a matter of time, but you should not be afraid of opening anything. And if you find yourself being afraid of something, open it even for the sake of opening. That's my principle. It's like, don't really just take only black box as if like, oh, I don't understand it. I'm just gonna hope that it will work. It will really over time cost you lots of time. So just open everything, see everything. Even if you don't understand it, go through it, right? So that's really um, the part, my advice. And uh, over time, it becomes a principle. It's your, it should be your motto. You know, I will not be afraid of a code. Like I'm gonna open every code, whether it's TensorFlow, the source code, I must open it until I open it one day, go into the, their GitHub and just see how they did it, then, you know, you say no to that. Like, you should, you know, like uh, Python code. Have you used, have you seen a py Python, how it's written? You should, if you haven't seen it, it must be just because of time. You should just go and open how Python is written. You know, We're like, what do they use to write Python? You know, it's like kind of like, can you contribute even to that? You know, over time. Of course, you don't have time now, but what I am saying is that there shouldn't be anything you are not going to open. If you are going to use it, you're going to open it. It's like a child in bed, it's toy. Everything here must be your toy and you must be able to be a type of child who's going to open everything or trying to open everything, whether they understand or not. That's not the question. It's like they, there's nothing that they don't open. And I want you to have that mentality. Just nothing, you know, you're gonna be afraid to not open. And in principle, over time, you must open everything. As I said, including the Python code, the entire, the, the basic thing that Python is written on, including maybe the kernel, the Linux kernel. If you are using Linux, just open the Linux kernel. You know, the code, it's in GitHub, right? Just go and open it. Okay, you may not understand much, but open it. Well, you know. Nothing, and then you at least can say like, oh, I've, I've looked at it, ah, they do, they structure their code in this way. Their folder structure is this way. You can at least say that, thing, but you must be able to open, open. So I think the same here, whether any kernel that you use, whatever, uh, from uh, Kaggle, just, you know, understand the code at least. You know, that, that's, that's important. And then of course you would serve the prediction on a wave. Um, basically, just like you did before, you can build it in Flask, you can build it on Streamlit, you can build in JavaScript uh, you want to. So start also understanding a little bit of JavaScript because we are coming in Web3 and in Web3 we are requiring you to build some things slightly in a little bit of JavaScript. Um, sometimes just, of course, we will use Brownie, which is much more of a Python based uh, Web3 uh, building, but still it doesn't hurt to start learning React and a uh, few ways of doing some kind of front end. Um, so, but it's it's uh, just election uh, elective. So that means it's not really you don't have to. And you will host it. That basically some of you already have been doing this. You know, you can use it on Streamly um, Store or you can in Heroku or any other place. And um, that's it. And then we'll have tutorials, three tutorials, one tutorial. Um, of course, where you just I have done now. And the other one is the time series data exploration in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow there will be a machine learning. So it's basically um, showing you some of the things that are done. And then the deep learning one on LSTM um, on Thursday.
Okay, so in stream submissions, as I said, it's just a quick uh, summary of your slide. Uh, so whatever you can you found so far, you will just put it on a slide. As I said, start always from the business understanding and and also conclude with you know and show what the data and then conclude also with you know what you manage to understand. Just a small summary always uh, and reference. That's great. And then of course link to your GitHub. Uh, and then uh, a screenshot of DVCML flow, um, at least. So this would be your, so, and when you, I think I have noticed also, most of you, you probably have done so much, but you only submit one screenshot and that screenshot even doesn't show what you have done. And to be frank, like I, I couldn't then offer any more higher, you know, we couldn't offer you higher values because we, we explicitly state, you have to show us the functionality of, so, one element of the way to evaluate for us is to see how functional your, your dashboard is. If you just gave us only one screenshot, we don't know how functional it is. If it's live stored, if live, uh, you know, uh, if it's live, then at least we can interact and we can see it. If you are just submitting screenshot, you must show all of the functionalities, or at least most of the functionalities with multiple screenshots, okay? I think you have to do it. Otherwise, you're really losing like or um, if you don't do it it's your fault so it's just like we are telling you really submit all the functionalities just don't submit something that is just that's just out of and also if it looks like if it doesn't look like a, a dashboard we're not gonna consider it as a dashboard so you must show us it's actually at least local host it's running as a as a you know as a dashboard if you are not deploying it so really take time because you have done all that just don't fail on the at the end uh, as well. Okay, so that's the you know the screenshots, uh, the GitHub, and then the slide will be the interim, and then the final, of course, a PDF report, a link to your GitHub, and link to your deployed application or a screenshot of your dashboard, and the screenshots demonstrating anything else. For example, the logging part, really, we if you don't write it inside, the, you know, in your README so that we can see it. Maybe just screenshot the places where you have uh, try and accept, as well as also um, the logging, so that you know anything that. So there will be like anything that you have done uh, that we want to see for you. Screenshot it and attach it in this screenshot for anything section, okay? Because that way we will be able to see what you have done. Of course, if everything is visible inside your GitHub, it's fine. You know, we'll be able to look, but if it's so many things, sometimes we might miss. So, you know, if something is just nice for you, just screenshot it and attach so that we will be able to see, okay? Or comment in your submission uh, that, that you have done this and that here and there. So you can just give also like some form of like writing, um, pointing, okay, you know, you can look in this code, uh, this or that. So help us to see some of the, the great things that you have done sometimes if we fail to see, okay? Most of the time we really go and explore our, your GitHub, but you can also guide us that way and it will help. Okay, and then there are these references you can read. I think this one, it's a paper, you should read it just so that it, you can understand the value of, you know, what I've been saying in terms of like why you need forecasting. And, you know, it's, people can really can, it's the most needed thing in every company. With that, then it's all. So, any questions? Any question? Was that too fast? Was that okay? At least respond. Is it clear? Do you, do you agree about some of the things I say? Don't you agree? Clear, Martin is clear, great. Anyone else clear, not clear? Status, okay, Dagmawi is clear, Zain is clear. Great, Samuel. Okay, I don't get the sample submission data set. Uh, so if it's not, I think as I said, it's I'm gonna attach where, uh,
so so when it was it was a 35000 as you could imagine it was a 35000 uh, price it was 6 years ago um, the competition but in the data so that is the part so i'm just going to attach that so that you can be able to see I have attached it, so hopefully that's clear. Yeah, so uh, that's true. It is it is inside the zip file, and so or everything is inside the zip file. Um, so clear, somewhat clear. Reading the challenge, great, wonderful. So yeah, Daisy. Uh, thank you. I. I have a question, but it's not entirely related to the challenge. No, it doesn't have to go. Um, when do you determine if a data set is seasonal? There, there is some, is that mine? Okay, let me mute. Uh, go on, Daisy. Uh, sorry about that. Um, when do you determine when a data set is seasonal? if it's not been explicitly stated say it again um how do you determine if a data set has seasonal data if it's not been explicitly stated has what i, I, I don't i didn't get if a data set has what like it's uh it's it's it has seasonal data so like the seasonality aspect ah so the seasonal data um it's very normally it's just known as like you you could look at it there are seasonality means a number of things right one is mm -hmm. it's so usually um one easy way one could see that you plot it it may not be clear at all that it has seasonality seasonality means some kind of periodic some some form of nature right some form of um but because as you could imagine uh it's seasonality means it's like the music there are multiple ways of being music right because music is like made up of similar things like that means there are things that are repeating there is pattern but that pattern is really different so how you compose it there's always pattern in the music you know unless it's a noise uh, music but there are multiple ways of being a music and so you have to decompose it to be able to see the its seasonality. So that's why there are many ways to decompose it. One is Fourier transport, and you will be able to see in Fourier space. Easiest way. Um, but for example, uh, profit. Uh, I think there is a noise. Daisy, can you mute? Yeah. So profit, just the uh, one we give you. It will estimate the seasonality index um, of like things that we know, like uh, day, week, uh, and I think that it will have also season, uh, like which means like spring or whatever, and yearly, so the yearly uh, seasonality, as well as also some, it, it decomposes seasonality into three categories. One is regular categories and the other one is non-regular categories. And so it models that. So it will incorporate three types of seasonal models. And that's, you will see that. So, but it's, it's sometimes it's obvious by look, by plotting, you'll see it. Sometimes it's slightly less obvious, but you will see it by decomposing it. Does that answer, does that address your question? Yes, it does, thank you. Anyone else? So yeah, the reason why we are including, okay. So the reason why we are including profit is also because it has simple, it is very simple, but it allows you to be able to see this, how it decomposes it. So how you, you know, systematically you can decompose things to be able to 
tame them, you know, to be able to get more understanding about them and measure them. And I think that that is the, the key things in science is that it is how you phrase the question sometimes would give you the answer uh, a lot more. And so in this sense, you know, by just there are multiple, multiple models um you you can see it in the must read paper like you would see there are multiple statistical models that does that but some are but you still how you model it is kind of will give you a, you know why sometimes some methods can be so fast while while being also superior in terms of accuracy because the, just the modeling is sometimes the the key or how how you phrase it basically also matters in terms of uh, data analysis okay martin Okay, thank you. So, um, for this one, uh, I was seeing that uh, you have recommended the use of uh, just a moment. Yeah, um, uh, the use of uh, Keras, PyTorch, TensorFlow. Uh, I believe it's like one of one of the three for this particular assignment. That was what you are trying to mean. Yeah, it's just basically mean you can have implementation of LSTM in one of them. Oh, all right. Yeah. I think you can again, on some of the Kaggle, Kaggle netbooks, you would see some people use PyTorch, some people use Keras, you know, so you can choose whatever, uh, as long as you use one of the framework. Okay, Binium. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Uh... On task 1.2, we are required to use uh, uh, Python logging by library. Does that uh, imply uh, MLflow or uh, we can use other libraries like uh, logging? Logging. I mean, it's, it's, it's much more to indicate that you use this logging because it's not always that MLflow come at handy because it's an, an external setup, but using logging would really give you for almost every other scenarios. Logging is just, uh, you know, an easy one. Uh, and of course, you know, you could use everything, anything else that's that that's kind of a simple as well. Uh, I think there's one. So you, you could, it's basically logging for now. Like it just means logging. Let's simplify it. Thank you. Anything else? Samuel. Okay, hello and good morning to everyone. Hello, Yabba. Hello. Uh, I was wondering about the, the pre-processing step, like uh, there's a day, date, the time column, and it says to extract the following uh, with days and uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what do you mean by extract? We, we should uh, form a new column and uh, give those as a one feature or what? Uh, yeah, I think that, that just means that it's, you're basically, you have like a, a string now that just gives you a timestamp, right? So a date, uh, uh, an hour, second, blah, blah. Now you will be able to, of course, combine it, what is a weekday? Because you assume this is in, in a European time. So you would basically be able to know from a calendar that you know what is a weekday and what is, um, you know, what is not a weekday. Right, so it's kind of like you'll be able to form whether it's a, even if it's not, it may not give you, I mean, the data I don't think has anything called whether it's a weekday or not, but you can actually form your own thing called it's a weekday or not, right, from the timestamp. So oh. uh, it, everything else, the state holiday, whatever is given to you, but uh, the rest, because the state holiday, whatever depends on a country, but the rest is much more of like you would you would be able to get it from from a timestamp. So sh we should uh, manipulate the data uh, at that column and like exactly for example those, if those... we able encode it the dates will like be weekday this and uh, week uh, state holiday means this 
for that colobin? Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, just transform it, transform yeah, okay. the, uh -huh. the timestamp into multiple columns where which will help you your, your, you know, your analysis. Okay, much clearer, yeah. thank you. Great. Anyone else? I think it's important, you know, this first day is important to just be able to, of course, definitely you will ask a lot of questions and, you know, it's all about that. But imagine this is how in the real world, like, okay, there is a problem, some, they phrased it, whatever, now they, they, they called you in a meeting and they say, okay, we have a client. Uh, usually if you are working like that, it's like, okay, we need to get that. Um, and here are, as far as we know, here are the things. And they don't tell you, of course, how to do it. I mean, of course, there is a senior data scientist who would probably, or a senior machine learning engineer, data engineer who would kind of design something, but it still expects that they would be so happy and they would love you, of course, if you enrich it. That means if you do beyond if you do what is asked, class beyond, or that makes it better, right? So, you know, think of this one as like, as our way of first day, okay, at work, like in not first day, but like just there is a client or a challenge and we needed to address that. We all met and say like, okay, great guys, like let's do this, okay? And it is in that spot that you should be asking a lot of questions to understand it, to drill down um, as well as if everything is clear, of course, you don't have to ask, but just it is this time, you know, until mid, like, let's say 4 p.m. Uh, or 2 p.m. UTC, should be able to really clearly understand what's requested and you should be able to figuring it out what's kind of, how do you do it, you know, like create your Git repository for that and all that. It's that kind of attitude that I want as well as also every week you must challenge. There must be one thing challenging you. That means, as I say, open something. Open something that you haven't opened before. Psych it, if you haven't opened it, open it now. That means go to the Git, you know, spend one hour, explore how it's written. Next time, next week, maybe you would open and explore you know, TensorFlow or Keras. Always challenge your, yourself, like just to do one thing that you haven't done before in that week. And something that's big, something that's that you wouldn't have done otherwise, right? It's like so, I'm gonna introduce that. What have you opened? What's your challenge for this week? Um, in one of the in the standups, so that everybody can update what they have done. But it is this mentality of, you know, that I'm gonna open everything. You know, everything is a toy. It's nothing different from a toy. It's adults toy, right? Let's say or you know, machine learning engineers toy, like whatever you have and don't treat it more than that. And of course, you, you know, the toy is really has value and it costs. So that's why, of course, the, if it breaks, sure, it costs somebody money, your parents or your company, right? But of course, you don't want to unnecessarily break it. But, you know, without breaking, the whole point of that toy is also to be able to be broken and to provide some kind of value to the to everyone. So, okay, the analogy stops there. I'll just stop there, but it's just that I want you to not consider more any of these tools more than that way. And so every time just there, 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 there until the point that it becomes your nature that, ah, okay, like I'm going to open, you have opened everything, like the kernel, the Linux kernel, the Python code, and you know, whatever that's, that you thought amazing and great, just you opened it. So um, it's with that. Okay. So I think hopefully that has got into you and you are excited to go and open something now. So until then, um, yeah, let's stop it then because I feel things are clearer. Awesome. Have a lovely day and happy forecasting. Cheers, everyone. Bye. So, uh, Tina Calamity, we can stop the recording. Thanks, everyone. Bye.